We gotta get over here. I am Sub Zero. I'm recording, by the way. I know, I'm waiting for you to stop talking. Oh. Roundabout, and welcome back to another episode of Al Pacino's Prison Scene, the podcast where we look at movies that objectively have no deeper meaning, and we think about it. As always, I am your host, Thomas Butler, and with me is my co-host, Jake Ferrier. Your brother's soul shall be mine! I almost messed up my own name there. Uh, what were you going to say? I, I think I said Butler. <laughs> uh, but today we are talking about the 1995 Five. movie Mortal Kombat. Uh, this was supposed to be released in uh, tandem with the 2021 Mortal Kombat, but then Warner Brothers had to push back that release date. Warner. So. Now this episode is coming out before that movie, so now you can get uh, you can get all hyped up. You can watch the original 1995 Mortal Kombat movie on Peacock free with ads because that's what I did. And then a couple of days later, I mean, and then listen to this, which you're doing right now. So good job. Uh, and then a couple of days later, you can watch the new 2021 Mortal Kombat movie on HBO Max if you have if you have that. Or you can be cool and go to the theaters, but wear a mask. And then once you get inside, eat, get popcorn and then eat one popcorn every 10 seconds, because if you're eating, Corona can't get you. That's no, that's what we did at Godzilla vs. Kong. OK, don't cancel me. Uh, also, how this movie get a how this movie get a number two? What do you mean? Annihilation. Oh well, it was a box office success. How? But uh, almost the entire cast did not return for the second movie, and the second movie flopped super hard. In well, every yeah, because the word because the entire cast didn't return. You know what would have been cool? What if Dwayne Johnson was in it? Was he an actor in the nineties in ninety five? Oh, I don't know. Oh, is he still a wrestle boy? I, well, I don't when, think, when was Doom? When I don't did think Doom Mo- come out? Like 2005. His first movie oh, role, I'm pretty sure, was Mummy 2. Uh, and that was late 90s, I think. 2001. Well, the first... Okay, the first one's probably 99. When did The Rock start? I'm pretty sure he played the Scorpion King. That was his first... Uh, oh, really? That was not a good movie. Role. No. 19- hey, 1995. In The Mummy 2, he plays the Scorpion King. Oh, have you seen the movie The Scorpion King? Yeah. It's bad. It's a prequel to that movie. Uh, but he started in nineteen ninety five. So potentially he could have been in, in Well what did he who did he what was he in? Uh oh wait, no, this is nineteen ninety one this is two thousand and one. What? What? Well Calgary what Stampede. What are you talking about? Well, I, I looked up on Google when did the rock start acting? And it says 1995. And then I look, when did The Rock start his acting career? And it says 2001. Which is The Scorpion King. Yes. So I was right. Yes. But Google is wrong. But also right. If you look down a little bit. The first response is wrong. Yo, what if Vin Diesel and... uh, What's his name? The Rock? No, no, no. Wait, did I say Vin Diesel first? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What if Vin Diesel and Dwayne Johnson had a baby? When I said Vin Diesel, I thought I said The Rock. So I was trying to think of the other guy's name, but it's Vin Diesel. Right. I'm gonna who look who may or may not exist. Vin Diesel? Yeah. Dude, what a weird last name. Diesel? Well, that's not his real name. But also, what a weird name is The Rock? Well, that's also not his real name. Mark Sinclair. Who's that? That's Vin Diesel. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, back back, back to your regularly scheduled program. All right, so we're here to talk about Mortal Kombat, um, which, had you had you seen this movie before? I thought I did, <laughs> and then I watched it again, 
And I was like, I don't remember any of this happening. The only thing I remember is that is that Scorpion had like weird like plants coming out of his arm. Right. And apparently, canonically, that's how it is originally in the game. I did not know that. I just always thought it was like a string. But then it actually makes sense in the original game. If you look at like the animations, it's like just like wow. Straight but, out of his no, hand. that that's wrong. That's wrong. It um, should, it's it's supposed to be the like the like the like the whooshing, you know, whooshing. No, um, oh. I I I watched this a couple of months ago, but evidently. I was on and off asleep for part of it because I did not remember either Goro fight or the entire power battle between uh, Dude. Liu Kang and Shang Tsung. But I did remember the very end when they go back to Earth. So I, I was not asleep at the end. So I don't know how I missed the whole tower battle. Uh, speaking but, of, uh, anyways, uh, what did you say? I don't know. Because I you said something and I was going to respond to. Oh, Goro. Dude, what a bad character design. In general or for the movie? For the well, for the movie specifically, like they just added another torso. Yeah, that's but that's how he is in the game. Is it? He's I got thought... yeah, he's got four arms like that. No, 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 no. But it's not. No, no, no. But like in the game, it makes sense. But for some reason, in the movie, it just looks weird. He looks too long, like too tall. Like his yeah. arm looks too long. Well, um, there's a video that you can look at where the director of the new Mortal Kombat movie talks about how there's things in video games that make more sense than um, they would in movies. So that's probably just a testament to that. They should have done it how it was done in Ben 10. Which one? The red guy. I know four arms, but yeah, which yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. Which, which Ben 10? Oh, the first one. First what? The first Ben 10. Are you talking about the movies or the show? No, no, the show. Okay, well, there's also live action movies. What? So wait, I don't know what you're talking about in the show because that's a cartoon, and they you, that's the same thing applicable that the dude was saying about video games. Things in a cartoon can make more sense than when they're in line. Well, uh, live action. Bye. Right. What the heck? You, do you not know about this? There's like two or three movies. What? <laughs> no. And they're also developing a live action show currently. Uh, but we're not here to talk about Ben 10. We're here to talk about Mortal Kombat. So I'm going to get into a recap here. Um, the movie opens with the banging theme song, the the Mortal Kombat theme song, which that's probably the best part of the movie, TVH. Uh, yes. The beginning when it's like, dun, 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 or whatever the song is. Um, and then I'm pretty sure it's like a nightmare. And Star Shao, 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 Shang Tsung is like, oh, I got your brother's soul, Liu Kang. And then Liu Kang wakes up and he's like, oh. And then we go to Sonya Blade. She's like, I'm an army girl hunting down Kano. And then we go to Johnny Cage and he's like, I'm an actor fighting other actor boys. Uh, and so Shang Tsung is behind everybody. And he's like, Kano, get Sonya to the ship. And this channel's like, okay. And then he's like, Johnny Cage, go to the thing, but I'm pretending I'm like your manager or something. And Johnny Cage is like, okay. And then uh, Liu Kang is like, he killed my brother, monk people. And they're like, no, you can't go to the tournament because uh, you left. And then Raiden's like, yeah, but he needs to go. So then he goes and they all get on the ship. And then on the ship, Shang Tsung brings Scorpion and Sub-Zero. And then they get blasted by Raiden. And Raiden's like, you can't fight them here. You got to fight them in the tournament. And Shang Tsung's like, oh, okay. Uh, so then they get to the place and they're walking on the beach and then Johnny Cage is like, man, this place is weird. How did we get here? And, and Sonya Blade's like, yeah, my my compass is not working. And so then they keep walking on the beach. And then Liu Kang sees Katana. And he's like, oh, she's pretty. She's pretty, pretty. And then uh, Chang Sung is like, hey, Reptile, uh, make sure that Katana doesn't talk to the good guys. Because we need them. And then I think they go to eat. But there's a little fight where they eat. And then, um, I don't know, some more stuff happens. So they start fighting. And then Shang, Shang, Shang Tsung is like, I'm taking your soul, ha. Huh? I got your soul. The guy that Liu Kang just beat. Uh, and so then they fight some more. There's a lot of fights. Uh, Goro fights a random human that is not important because he dies. And then Scorpion fights uh, Johnny Cage in the forest. And Liu Kang fights that dude I already talked about. And then Liu Kang fights Katana. And Katana's like, in your next fight, you got to use the element that brings people life. 
And also uh, Sonya Blade fights Kano and kills him, I think, maybe. I don't know. It wasn't really clear, but it sounded like he kind of did because she snapped his neck. Uh, which, of course, Shang Tsung told him to just to humiliate him, humiliate her, but that is not what happened. And then uh, Liu Kang's next fight is when Sub Zero, and apparently the element that brings people life is uh, water, evidently. And so he kills Sub Zero with his ice, like the, his own ice powers. And then Raiden's like, "All right, yo, you guys need to learn not to be scared of stuff, or you're not going to win." So then Johnny Cage fights Goro and kills him and says a line that he said earlier in the movie. He says, this is when you fall down. And I thought that was pretty cool. And then uh, Shang Tsung is like, wow, that's not allowed. I'm going to take Sonya Blade to my tower. So he takes her to his tower. And then Liu Kang is like, oh, I got to kill Reptile. So he kills Reptile. And then Katana's like, when you get in the tower, you got to fight your enemy. You got to fight yourself and you got to fight your fear. And so he goes in there and he does those things and he kills uh, Shang Tsung. And then his brother's like, man, you're a good brother, Liu Kang. Liu Kang's like, yeah, I know. And then uh, they go back to Earth World, Earth Realm or whatever. And Raiden's like, ha good job, guys. And then Shao Kahn is like, oh, you thought you won, but you didn't. And that's the end. And the song plays again. I don't like this movie. I didn't really either. And um, I'm going to read you a quote from the uh, Mortal Kombat Wikipedia article, like the Wikipedia article for this movie. Because I think it is hilarious. The quote? Yes. Oh. Uh, how does it go? Mortal Kombat! <laughs> Oh, maybe it's not in this article. Uh, I used to be able to play the thing on Marimba. Oh, oh, it's the it's in the article for the movie's director. That's Yo, so okay. I, I was I was looking through uh, the Ben Ten live action. How do you feel about this, Thomas? The next Ben Ten live action movie to happen should be directed by Taika Waititi. Why? I don't know. That's just what somebody said. Okay. Uh, well, the quote is, this is talking about the development of this movie, Mortal Kombat. And this is a few sentences. It says, the production company decided to release Mortal Kombat in August 1995 in the hope that the film would become a summer blockbuster. Previous video game ad- adaptations, such as Super Mario Bros., Double Dragon, and Street Fighter, had received particularly negative reviews. Although Street Fighter was a commercial success, Double Dragon failed to break even, and Super Mario Bros. became a notorious box office bomb. Mortal Kombat was better received by critics who gave it mixed to negative reception. And that line is funny to me. Okay, that here... The, the better... the better Mortal Kombat is one of the better received movies because it garnered mixed to negative reception. Dude, here... Have you ever seen the Super Mario Bros. live-action movie? No. Do you know anything about it? Yeah, I know everything about <laughs> it. I just have never for gotten you, around to seeing it. For you listeners who... For all you Shaggy Goose Egg boys who don't know anything about that film... It's not Mario at all. It's so weird. They're like in like a like well, I a, like the Goombas. They they're look, not they Goombas. Cool. They're not Goombas. It's like set in like like a super like high tech uh futuristic like Blade Runner uh the fifth element esque future. And it's Mario and Luigi still, but they're they're I think they're still plumbers, right? I don't know. I, I think they're still plumbers. They're not really brothers. I know that. They're also not really brothers, and they go to like an alternate dimension or something. It's Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo. It's just, it's just, it's not. And I'm pretty sure, like, Den- I think Dennis Hopper is Bowser or King Koopa, excuse me. But it's, it's, it's so, it's so strange. Honestly, a cult classic, though. Uh, I'll give it that. Okay. Well, um, so that's what this movie has for you. At least it's about Mortal Kombat. For, well, for, I was actually going to say, so further down in the Wikipedia article, it mentions that last year in 2020, the film's 25th anniversary, uh, people kind of went back and looked at it again. Yeah. And they're like, actually, you know what? This movie's uh, this movie's pretty good. Uh, we should give it a higher score. Like Rotten Tomatoes released a podcast talking about how the Rotten Tomatoes score needs to be higher for this film. Um, and they talked about how it is very faithful to Mortal Kombat. Um, now, I don't know a lot about the Mortal Kombat lore. Uh, I still don't think this was a very good movie. Hopefully, the new movie, the new 2021 movie, will be better. 
Uh, it will be for me, number one, because it's got Jax in it. Jax is actually in it. He's kind of in this one, but not really. And Jax is my favorite Mortal Kombat character. Oh, is he? No, Kano is the bad guy. Who's Jax? He's got robot arms. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, the guy the guy who got punched in the face by Goro? No, no, no. He's, Jax is working with Sonya in the beginning of this movie. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, he didn't go to the place. Oh, okay. Um, yep. and, and this also, this movie, if this says anything for you listeners... Uh, has the least amount of notes I've ever taken. Uh, oh, Thomas, would you like to see my notes? Sure. Is it just like one sentence? And that, it's all about how how Johnny Cage is racist. He is racist, and I noted that. He's also sexist. I wrote down, Liu Kang told Johnny Cage, if you're racist, shut up. Because what happens is, I didn't, oh, I didn't yes. mention this in the recap, what happens is... Okay, well, let me, let me, let me, let me say his line. He goes, okay. Johnny Cage is like about to get on the boat. And he looks at Liu Kang, and he and Lu, and he Johnny Cage is like, "Hey, can you take my bags?" And Liu Kang's like, "What the heck?" And then Johnny Cage goes, "I pay money, you carry the bags." And then Liu Kang picks up his bags and drops it in the sea after taking uh, Johnny Cage's money. Although when they get to Nether Realm or wherever they're going, uh, Outworld, um, Johnny Cage has so many bags, and I don't know where they all came from. Um, hey man, but that's that's not really important. Um, Raiden is white. Who knows, man? That's another thing. Is in the games, I'm pretty sure he's like Japanese, or he's he's at the very least Asian. I looked it up. He's based on the Japanese god Raiju, which is actually probably the Pokemon of Raikou. I think is probably also based off of that because that's like the Japanese thunder god or lightning god. Uh, not related to Mortal Kombat. Speaking of which, um, oh, I looked this up for something before, but I don't Warner know Brothers, it if you're listening. I think it was you that made this. Maybe it was legendary. I don't know. Whoever has the rights to the Pokemon movies, please make a live action mystery dungeon movie. I want to see that. I'm going to put that out in the universe. I think I've tweeted about that before. But uh, anyways, that's not related to Mortal Kombat, really. Unless you're listening to this, Warner Brothers and the Warner Sister Dot. Why, why do you keep saying Warner? That's Warner, that's Warner that's Brothers. That's how you say it. Warner. But uh, the point I was trying to make with um, my minuscule amount of notes is... Is this I was, age? I was, yeah, I was struggling really hard to find meaning in this movie because, me too, because it's very inconsistent. Like even the Ginger Dead Man, I feel like I had more of a grasp on than this. Which, if you listen to that episode, probably doesn't lend well to the quality of this whatever this episode is going to turn don't out. Don't listen, to be. don't listen to that episode. Um, listen to Mega Mind. Anyways, uh, so yeah, there's a few things that I like think come about. And, but ultimately what I guess the movie is about is accepting your own destiny. Cause that's the only real resolution that any of our characters come to. Is, is Lu- it? Well, cause Liu Kang is like, I'm not scared of my destiny anymore. And then he defeats uh, Shang Tsung. Is he, or is he like, I make my own destiny? No, I think it's that he has to accept it because uh, if he had accepted it initially then his brother wouldn't have died so like that's the consequences oh, okay, okay, of okay, him okay. not accepting his destiny wait no that's a different movie i make my own destiny uh yeah i i how how because also raiden raiden says the line every mortal is responsible for their own destiny and then uh but he says it like luke king repeats that line later so that thematically that's the only line that's ever repeated um, but he so, says it, he says it like every mortal has his destiny. Yeah. Also, so one thing I thought was weird was how Christopher Lambert played Raiden. But I watched a, like a mini documentary on YouTube, like a behind the scenes featurette on the movie, and he was instructed to play the character like that. So that was not him. He's also like he's not American, so I don't I don't know who casted this movie or whatever. But it's just it's all over the place. And then also a producer on this movie, uh, the, the featurette is called... Yo! What? The featurette is called A Journey Behind the Scenes, if, if, if uh, any of you people want to look it up after listening to this. But there's a producer in that video that talks about how like cutting edge Mortal Kombat is and like how all the effects look so good and everything. And uh, maybe it looked good for 1995, but they look terrible today. Dude, the little, the little, the little, the little guy who's like... Wee! The little guy, you know what I'm talking about? The little reptile camouflage guy, reptile. Yeah, is that his name? Yeah. Is that is that a fighter? Yeah. That's so. 
They also say his name numerous times in this movie. Tom's um, like, I could not follow along. Anyways, so that destiny line, uh, that's like thematically the Well, and like, I agree I with that. Ugh, excuse me. I agree with that. Because like, but also, uh, because also everything is like Johnny Cage, Sonya, and Luke Hang are our main characters here. Right. And they each want to go there for a certain reason. Um, but they all end up fighting for this cause to save Earth or whatever. And I think Sonya's is the most different because she's like trying to she's trying to uh, get Kano. So she's not even supposed to be in the tournament. She's just trying to get Kano. And now uh, Shere Khan or whatever. Shang like, Tsung. Yeah, Shere Khan. Uh, Shao Khan is a different villain. Shang Tsung is a villain of this. What did you just say? Shao Kahn is a different villain. Shang Tsung is the villain. No, Sheer Khan. I know Sheer Khan is the tiger from the Jungle Book. Yeah. You're making a joke. But if you're going to make a joke, you're making a joke about the wrong villain is what I'm saying. Shao, Shao Lang. I get, that's still Shao Khan. Shao Kahn? Because Shang Tsung is the villain in this one. Who is Shao Kahn? He's the villain at, that shows up at the end. He's the villain of the next movie. Oh, I didn't know that. All right, Shao Kahn. Uh, Not Shao Kahn. Shang Tsung. Shang Shang Khan. Okay. All right. Set the whole thing up. Yeah. So like, yes, it was different, but also no, it wasn't. Okay, but well, also Johnny Cage was like, I'm going to prove myself. I disagree that Sonya is different uh, because I wrote down that Johnny gets into the tournament for ego because his initial thing is like, he goes to the guy who I think is supposed to be his agent. Uh, and the guy's like, hey, nobody believes that you're a real fighter. Everyone thinks you're fake. If you go to this tournament, you can prove that you're a real fighter. And then it's revealed that that's actually Shang Tsung. But that's not relevant to this point I'm trying to make. And it's both Sonya and Liu Kang are going to the tournament to avenge a fallen ally or a loved one. Because <sighs> Liu Kang is going because Shao Kahn killed his brother. So he wants revenge on Shao, uh, Shang Tsung. Um, and then, wait, wait, what? Is that real? What? Shao Kahn killed his brother? No, I meant to say Shang Tsung. Okay. Was... Uh, and then Sonya, somebody, Kano killed somebody close to Sonya, her partner. Uh, and that's so why she wants Sonya to Sonya squeezes his head between her legs. Yeah. Um, until it pops like a So to me, watermelon. Sonya and Liu Kang have the same motivation. And Johnny Cage is the only one that is selfish. Which, I mean, I guess arguably they're all selfish. But Liu Kang's and Sonya's are both in relation to uh, something that happened to another person where it's uh, Johnny Cage is just for self-preservation. Well, what I meant by that mainly is that she wasn't selected for the tournament. How, well, how are the other ones selected? Well, because uh, Shere Khan goes to him. Yeah, but Shang Tsung told Kano to take Sonya to the ship. Yeah, but she wasn't... She was not... Selected for the tournament, though. How? D- directly. How? In the same way that... And how were the others selected? Well, because uh, Liu Kang was like, hey, I'm going to be in it because they needed a fighter. And then the guy went to Johnny Cage and was like, hey, tournament. Okay, well, then you're not saying selected is not the word you want. They, Liu Kang and Johnny Cage both voluntarily joined the tournament. There you go. And Sonya did not. Uh, and I, I guess that's true. But um, ultimately, Sonya and Liu Kang both go because, for what I perceive to be pretty much the same reason. Yeah, and I'm not surprised at all that Johnny Cage ended up being a good guy, quote unquote. But yeah. I will say, I'm a little upset that he didn't do the little fireball thingy, the little green thing. Oh. Where he does that. Yeah, well, I mean, it wouldn't make sense for him to know how to do that if he's just like a regular human in this one. Oh, Which, and I don't know. Wait, is he not a regular human in those ones? I don't know. I mean, he is in the games, but that's what I was about to say. I don't know where he learned how to do that or like oh, the okay, lore of the okay, game. Okay, okay. The only move I know, because in the first game, I'm not even sure if he has that. Uh, and this movie is largely based off of the first game with some events taken from the second game, yeah. according to the Wikipedia page. And the second movie follows the events of the third game. Um, they skipped the game. No. There's also a point in the movie where Raiden like lists off each of the flaws of our three main characters. Yeah. He says, and so I thought that maybe this could be an element of meaning. He says that Johnny Cage uh, rushes into fights to prove that he is not fake. 
and he fights bravely yet foolish. Uh, Sonya Blade is afraid to trust and won't admit when she needs help. And then Liu Kang fears his own destiny. Um, but I don't think any of those get addressed except for maybe Liu Kang, as I already said. I mean, Johnny Cage is kind of does at the very beginning. Of the movie? Like, yeah, at the, at, the, at the very, very beginning. Because when... when uh, Shang Tsung? Shang Tsung. Uh, goes to him as the as the agent guy. He's like, "This is your chance to to prove yourself." So it's right there, but then it never pops up again, like you said, until the very well, end. Well, but that's still what Raiden is talking about. He's only in these fights to prove himself. Yeah. Well, no, and I and I agree. And then yeah, the Sonya thing. I don't. Does that ever come up? Well, like, uh, I mean, not verbally, but yeah, throughout the film. Well, it kind of does because she's she tells when she's going into like the tunnel, or whatever, following Kano. She tells Liu Kang and. Uh, Johnny Cage not to follow her. And then earlier in the film, when she's talking to Jax close to the very beginning, she says, there's only one person I trust on this earth. And oh, you're and it's me. Oh, I wrote that down. Something like that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, those those character traits are present throughout the film, but I'm saying they never reckon with them in any way. Because, I mean, arguably, that was the point of Johnny Cage taking on Guru. But to me, that's much more of a brash fight than anything he's done throughout the film before. Yeah. So I don't see that as him trying not... Like, I don't see that as him evolving as a character unless you would argue that um, he did so to protect the other characters and that, in a way, is evolving. But I mean, he I could, but... I, yeah, I, I agree. I, I mean, he could, but there's not enough evidence, I don't think, to support that reading. And then for Sonya, uh, she ends up being the damsel in distress at the end, so she needs their help to get out of it. But that wasn't a voluntary decision on her part to let them help her. So I don't think that that contributes any meaning. And Who's then, the other girl? Katana. Katana, but she's not a human, so she don't matter. Uh, and then Liu Kang, uh, as we discussed at the top of the episode, or a couple minutes ago, um, set, resets the destiny line, but then even that's like tenuous at best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I think if there is any meaning on this, it's they say it. I could not. I at first I was trying, but I just it it just did not. I couldn't find anything. This is this is your uh, how to change a dragon. Me? Yeah. That was you. Yeah. But I was also I also did that in Friday the Thirteenth. Okay. Where I was like, I just do not. Oh, sorry. Oh. I was. I sorry. 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 sorry, 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 sorry. All right. I Anyways. have a question. Do okay. you have more like meeting stuff? Yeah. Okay. Um. I mean, you can ask me your question. Well. Okay. So I have a lot of questions too. When Shere Khan at the, at the beginning well, was like he he slurped up Liu Kang's brother's soul. What's mm-hmm. his name? I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. He he points at the camera and he goes, "You will be next." So, is he talking about me? Yeah, you think that was kind of meta? Well, I think that was just um, because it was it was Liu Kang's nightmare. Oh, okay, that makes sense. But that would that would suggest that Liu Kang is in the dream. If there was like a, like a whatever that's called. What's it called when you look directly at the camera? I mean, you're a, he was I looking know, at the third camera. Third person perspective. It was like a POV. Yeah. Ask. Um, I do have a question about that directly though, because when Liu Kang wakes up, he's in a green. He's there's like a green light. Yes, he room. is in a green room, and that seems like that seems like it should be symbolic of something. But I have no idea what it be what it would be symbolic for. Well. I agree, but in class today, Chris uh, used it to symbolize. That was not today. Oh yeah, it was. <laughs> you you almost had me really worried there for a second. That was Tuesday. Yeah, that Tuesday. was today. Uh, Chris is like envy, but what would he be envious of? That well, I mean, green does mean envy, but that does not. That's not applicable to Blue Kang at all. Well, that, that's what so I'm saying. What, like, what is... the only thing that I thought that it could be related to is when he fights reptile at the end that's like his self-realization moment oh his reptile is green but then the, the color green so doesn't mean anything see it says green is often thought to represent tranquility good luck health and jealousy and see none of that is applicable to his situation because he's like unless it's telling him unless green means go and like this is the start of his journey or whatever green means go there you go um what does green signify in the Bible? Okay, and then one more thing that I think could have been meaning, but it is ultimately not, is like generational uh, responsibility or obligation. 
Are you talking about because, uh, with Liu Kang's yeah. little monk people? No. Liu Kang is the descendant of Kung Lao. And I don't know Kung Lao's uh, story in the games. But they mentioned that a few times in this movie, that he's a descendant of Kung Lao. So presumably Kung Lao won the tournament sometime before. But the reason I think that that meaning is lost is because we don't ever see Kung Lao in action. So like, I think if the movie had opened with Kung Lao winning the tournament or doing whatever he did, and then we see Liu Kang later, then that theme of generational obligation or Wait. whatever would work. What? Uh, he's in the. He's in. Oh wait, is this? What are you looking at? No, no, no. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Never mind. Um, and then there is there is a point though, and and I guess it's hell. I don't know if there's an actual word for it. Wherever Scorpion takes Johnny Cage, Johnny Cage picks up something as a shield, and I think that's supposed to be Kung Lao's hat. Uh, so maybe Scorpion killed Kung Lao. I don't know. I don't know what their I don't know what their story is. Also, I'm pretty sure sometimes Sub Zero is a good guy, so I don't know what the deal with that is. Yeah, I yeah I don't I yeah I but, don't know. Um, so my one of my friends was explaining to me the other day, but it's pretty complicated, so I'm not going to get into it here. If you if you know you know, and if you don't, it doesn't matter because it's not in this movie. Um, the what the other thing that I think could be meaning, well, number one, uh, souls are important. I don't know why they're important, Yo, but they so, are. Well, he. Are you talking about symbolically? Why are they important? Yeah. Cause, okay. Well, because Shang Tsung obviously is like your soul is mine or whatever Finish he is. Him. And then you know he's the guy who eats the souls, and his power comes from all the souls. But then also Raiden, when they're on the boat, Raiden tells the three humans that he's looked into their souls, and uh, has determined that one of them will decide the outcome of the tournament. Which, so then I think that that soul thing might align itself with the destiny moniker. Again, yeah. moniker was not the right word there. I just sometimes I just say words that feel right. Yes, yeah, so whatever whatever is most poignant. Yep. Um so souls Mo- moniker souls Lewinsky. destiny, you know, those are always lined up together. One thing I do think it's interesting about that scene though, and this goes back to our discussion when I'm, what I think was last week. I'm not sure my timetables are all messed up in our Velocipaster episode. Um, yes. because Raiden is a god, and so like Raiden can see into their souls and knows that one of them will be victorious, but not he doesn't know which one. Which goes back to my uh quote unquote theory that God has several uh, like the Christian God has several paths laid out for everyone, but he doesn't know which path they would choose. So that's just an interesting little maybe commentary, probably really not in there. All right. Um well, do you know who directed this? Yeah, Paul P. Paul W. S. Anderson. Which, for those of you who don't know, this is like his second movie. He is uh, married to Mila Jovovich. Mila Jovovich. Mila Jovovich, uh, and he also, which means he directed the Resident Evil movies as well. Not as, all of them. Well, he only directed three of them because I looked that up earlier. That's enough. He directed the first one, the last one, and maybe two in between. Which will be. Four. And then he just did Monster Hunter. Which I have not seen. I know you have. Yeah. So that happened. Oh, he directed Event Horizon. Yes. He was a producer on the Three Musketeers. All right. Is there something to that, or are you just saying that? Well, you're. It's just. It's like. It's like the thing. It's like. Oh well. There's not a lot of meaning here. I was like. Oh well. Not trying to bash Paul W. S. Anderson, but uh, take a look at his track record. They're usually not super substantial meaning. Like they're not profound films. Was I just talking? It okay. did not feel like I was talking. Um, but back to Mortal Kombat. The other, beyond the Souls and Destiny thing, uh, there, there's another thing that I think could be construed as meaning, or you could pull meaning from, and that's how both Raiden and Shang Tsung view humans in this movie. So it seems like Raiden uh, views humans as like the ultimate saviors. And then obviously, you know, this is the 10th Mortal Kombat, and if Shang Tsung wins, then the Earth loses or whatever. And I don't, I don't understand all that, but... Uh, that's the conceit we're dealt with at the beginning of this film, so you just kind of have to accept it. But Shang Tsung has several lines throughout the movie about what I think is supposed to be like the futility of humanity or whatever. Um, and so let me see. I wrote, I wrote a few of them down. Let me see if I can find them. Uh, but he's talking about Kano here. He's talking to Goro. I don't remember what Kano said, but he says, men like Kano can amass a great wealth and almost godlike power on Earth. And so that's basically saying that, you know, he views humans as valuing corrupt nature and everything about Kano more than uh, the things that are present within uh, our three hero- heroes. 
Well, and I think that's an interesting point, uh, too. And I think that I'm going to say that there's a little bit of merit to what he's saying, because if we look at like. If we look at the people that the humans are fighting, they on the surface are definitely more powerful. Like Sub-Zero has like ice powers. Yeah. And Scorpion has the little well, plane and thingies. Like, in the games, uh, Liu Kang has has fire, has fire powers, powers. I'm pretty sure. And I thought I remembered him using that. Well, and I, and I thought... Well, at the end, he there's something. But, and I thought... Well, I thought that what Katana was talking about... Because isn't, isn't Katana a bad person in the game? I, I thought. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Um, which I was waiting on her to turn on them the whole time because of that. But... She, she said, didn't even she's and in Mortal Kombat X, she's also one of my favorite characters because there's one move that I use, and she did not use her fans in this movie at all, and I was very disappointed. Yeah. She's also not in the new one, I'm pretty sure. So she better be in the second new one. They're making another one? I mean, not uh, not officially, but if this one does good. Oh, right, right, right. I hope so. Um I like Mortal Kombat, it's cool. And then you can have DLC movie skins. Uh right. Anyway, um, but like Sub Zero got the little frosty frost. Big, he's got the, whoosh, whoosh, and then Goro is like this big old wham, you know. Yeah. Which also Kano never uses his laser eye. He's he does not, not and eye. I was kind of upset about that. But he also, does, he does in the new one though. It was in the trailer. It does not look like a laser eye. It just looks like a, it looks like a red ball. Right. Which you know it's nineteen ninety five. So. Well, but what's funny, going back to that uh, video I was, while I was talking about earlier where the producer talks about how the effects were supposed to be like groundbreaking and all this stuff. He he thought he mentions he got what he thinks is the best visual effects uh, person in the business at this time. And he lists off movies that she worked on and was a visual effects supervisor on, such as Terminator 2, uh, Last Action Hero, and a third movie I can't remember. And those movies both have phenomenal effects. But for whatever reason, it really feels like they fall flat in this one. Oh, and it I absolutely I does. Why. Maybe it was like the over reliance on CGI, and that just you know what just wasn't there yet. But uh, I don't know something about that. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, all the humans are poopy, but they still win. Which you know, whatever. I kind of think is dumb, but. Well, uh, there's two more quotes that I wrote down from Shang Tsung. I feel like there might be more throughout the movie, but I was not. Thinking uh, about this the entire time, says, so I didn't write him down. He says, finish him. No. He also uh, says, fatality. Yeah, he does He does say that. He's, he's talking He's talking about, no, he's talking to Johnny Cage here. This is in the scene when Johnny Cage was trying to convince him to, convince Shang Tsung to let him fight Goro now. And Shang Tsung's like, well, you're not supposed to fight him yet, but okay. Uh, and he says, um, you're very foolish a true sign of a hero. And then, you know, and I think he says actually has a line about humanity after that, but I didn't write that down because, you know, being brave, if you look at the definition of being brave, that means acting in spite of fear. It does not mean being fearless. So what I thought the point was when Raiden mentions their flaws was that humans are flawed and then that's why they're going to win. And then that's contrasted with Shang Tsung seems to uh, hold importance over a flawless victory. And so I thought that was going to be metaphorical. But then it's not for the reasons I laid out earlier. And Liu Kang says flawless victory at the end of the movie. So then the, the what the bad guy's been saying throughout the whole time has now been said by a good guy. Even though, I might point out, uh, Liu Kang did not have a flawless victory. Because in the game, that means that you defeated the other character without getting hit once. Yeah, and Liu Kang definitely got hit. Yeah. So now um, Shang Tsung had a flawless victory or not like uh, Goro. Sorry. Yes. With the, with the black guy. And then Liu Kang did earlier when, when, uh, which I wonder if that's saying something. Shang Tsung said the first time, what? That the, that the black guy got utterly annihilated. Well, because it's already um, racism is the racism is already present earlier. Yeah. But I think that was like calling it out or whatever. But then that is an interesting point you make because I'm pretty sure there's only two black characters in this film. And they both get defeated and get their soul sucked out by uh, Does Shang Jax, Tsung. Does that happen to Jax? Oh, no, I forgot about Jax. So there's three black characters, but he didn't go. The guy that Liu Kang defeats is black as well. That's oh, you're right. Which I Goro. thought that was going to be the Cryax guy or whatever. Cyrax? Cyrax, No, yeah. he's, he's, I'm pretty sure he's a, like a completely a robot. Uh, there's, there's like three robots, so I don't know. I don't remember which one is which. Cyrax is yellow. I remember that. Well, I don't think he's a total. Maybe robot. he's just a cyborg, but it doesn't matter. 
anyways, um, and then there's there's one more line that uh, Shang Tsung says. He says, I think this is to Sonya Blade. He says, hoping against hope, such an endearing human trait. Um, which is again, you know, that humans will are perseverance or persevering and stubborn and will keep fighting until you know they're all dead or whatever. Um Yeah. So those are his three lines about humanity. And then another reason that I thought potentially that could be important was that their humanity was going to be what helped them win is because uh, Johnny Cage tells Raiden right after he gets Chang Sung to let him fight Goro, he says, um, isn't it called Mortal Kombat? Aren't we supposed to fight it? Or something like that. And then Raiden, like after Johnny, Johnny Cage walks away, Raiden smiles and says, finally, one of them understands. Yo. So I was like, well, what's like, what does that mean? Does that mean he's trying to get them to understand that it's Mortal Kombat? Because I don't, I really don't feel like that was what he was pointing them towards throughout the movie. Are you asking me? Yes. You're supposed to be listening to me, not playing games on your computer. They added they added the Christopher Lambert skin. Yeah, I know. It's a Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, that's cool. All right, say it again. You're asking me about Mortal Kombat and how it is. It, well, it wasn't, it wasn't really Mortal? a question. It was more of a statement of like, what is Raiden's motivation throughout this film? Because it's, it seems like, sorry for you listeners that just heard me talk say this, but uh, Jake wouldn't pay attention. Just rewind. Um, right, so right after the Goro, right after Johnny Cage gets Shang Tsung to let him fight Goro, he tells Raiden something along the lines of, isn't it called Mortal Kombat? Isn't that why we're supposed to fight it? Because it is important that Raiden is not a fighter in this movie, even though he's a fighter in the game, because he's a god, so then it's the humans that have to fight this battle. Um, which, again, could be allegorical or... Uh, referencing the Bible in some way about how God chooses people to act for him, but never acts himself. But then even then that's not really true because there's stuff like the flood and stuff. Uh, But anyways, so then, then after Johnny Cage says that and walks away, Raiden says, uh, finally, one of them understands. So that makes me believe that like his whole goal in this film is to get them to understand that it's mortal combat, but that doesn't really make sense to me why that would be his goal. Or it doesn't like pop up ever again, and it doesn't seem to me that that's what he was pointing them towards. Well, but then also, what are they even understanding? What is he even talking about? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I guess that it's just that it's Mortal Kombat. Maybe yo, maybe he, maybe Raiden in this film is supposed to be like the game dev or something. Okay. So it's like it's like meta because why is it called Mortal Kombat in this film? Because Shang Tsung calls it Mortal Kombat. I don't know, cause, cause, cause you, if you die, you die. If he dies, he dies. But other than that, like, there's no reason for it to be so Raiden. Which also, Raiden, you know, you can go. Mine's not really related. Raiden is a game dev, and he's like, he's like, ah, this guy gets that we're in a movie, like in Chowder when they're like in this episode, Mongol's like, uh, in this episode, or Chowder's like in the episode, or like in Community when Abed says stuff like that, he's like this is a bottle episode. Maybe maybe Raiden's like, finally, somebody understands that it's just a movie. Uh, yeah, that's, I don't know. But well, then that also could be why Raiden acts so weird throughout. It's like he'll laugh at things and he just goes, "Sorry," <laughs> and like that's that's one of the things that I was like, "Why is he doing that?" But that he was instructed, and so according to that uh, little behind the scenes video I watched, he, the, the purpose was that Raiden Raiden's sense of humor is lost on the humans. Like none of the things he laughs at are funny. Like the one on the boat is like he ta- he's talking about how they're all gonna die, and then he goes, ha, 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 ha. "Yeah," but and they all just look at him and he goes, "Sorry." Thomas, and then later we're, we're at one humans. at one point he like he punches one of the like guard guys and then like smiles and the guard looks at him and he goes, "Sorry." <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, "What?" We don't, we what don't understand. We're not humans, Thomas. We are. You know humans. what it was? We are humans. because that wasn't scripted, <laughs> so he did it. He was saying sorry. To Paul W. S. Anderson. No, but that's what was in happening. The, no, in, but in the thing, both him and Paul say that that was the intention. What was for him to act like that? No, no, no. It's 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 it, 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 so it's deep. Thomas. I mean, it goes, and it then goes deep. it could be if if I'm going to extrapolate meaning from that, 
You no, mean no, the, no. that gods are beyond human understanding? No, no, no. Just, um, just listen to what I'm saying. It goes deep. I'm going deep. The the guy gods are beyond human understanding, and they act be on a plane that is beyond us. Um. Well, it is called portal combat. You say portal? No, mortal. Oh, okay. And then so yeah. Um. I also wrote down age is just a number because Katana is like ten thousand years old or whatever. Oh, and Johnny Cage is like, hey, yeah. you're so you're so pretty, baby. Also, I know that they're supposed to because of the games, but Johnny Cage and Sonya's like romantic relationship in this movie, it was no, it was like not real. No, until until, it wasn't. until like then at the end they're like, oh, we're happy, yay. Are they? Dude, that was so lame. That's like having a romantic thing in a <laughs> what's a movie that does it bad. There's a know. movie that has a bad one. It's like, this doesn't need to be here. I'm looking it up. Um, and then and then another thing I was going to say is the whole Destiny line that I mentioned earlier that Liu Kang says at the top, or at the end of the movie, felt like to me they were trying to do like the Spider-Verse thing when he's like, hey, pick yourself back up, or whatever he says. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And like in that movie, it's phenomenal, and it's very earned. In this movie, it was just kind of like, what is going on? Um, but I do think it's funny. You mentioned Paul W. S. Anderson earlier. Uh, this movie is regarded as one of the highlights of his career, and it was his second movie. So that says a lot this about is him. A, this is but a highlight. Event Horizon is a very good movie. If you don't let don't let Henry hear that. If you haven't seen it, um, but yeah, that's about that's about all I have to say. I have I have several questions that I don't really want to get into. Yo, wait like, a second. So what? I'm looking up. I'm looking up because I want to find one that's a uh, that's good uh, romantic subplot that is bad, and they said that uh, Batman and Batgirl is a bad subplot romantic and, subplot and what and the Killing Joke. It is. Nah, dude. Have you seen that movie? Yeah. Have you read? It's okay. It's it is pointless. We're not we're not going to get into that. But also, it says that Tariel, Legolas and Keeley, which I agree. with. I don't know what that is. I called her um, Tamriel last time, which okay. is wrong. Uh, is that Liv Tyler? It, it, is no, that, that's Arwen. It d- yeah. d- doesn't matter. Lord of the Rings is very confusing when you start thinking of everything. Well, this is the Hobbit. Stuff. Okay, well, there you go. That's why. Um, but Legolas is in I know, but Rings. he's not in the books. The Hobbit books. He's not in the Hobbit books. Hobbit book. Anyways, um, that's all I got. I mean, I... I, tell, I I don't have anything else either. So, um, but also, it was mainly you talking and then me being like, oh, Ben 10. Right. Or, um, so sorry about that, Thomas. That's cool. Uh, there's a lot of fights in this movie that I don't understand why they're there. Um, like, specifically the scorpion one. Why is Johnny Cage, like, just wandering in Dude, the forest? In the forest? Yeah. And then they're in hell. And then it just, I mean, like, that made sense because, like, scorpions got to teleport them there. But then what is that relevant to the story? Yeah. Because it cuts away from the tournament to that. So, like, was that even part of the tournament? But they just had to fight, I guess. But also, it's, like, illegal well, see, to fight outside thing. of the tournament. That's another thing. In the in the behind-the-scenes thing, the guy, the producer guy, which I'm starting to think he has no idea what he's talking about. Because uh, he was like, I watch all these Asian movies, and um, they have spectacular fight scenes and all this. But they don't have any of the stuff that we think is important over here, like plot and story and all that. So I was like... Why don't we combine the action of all those Asian Hong Kong movies with the great plots and stories of American movies? And that's what this movie is supposed to be. Uh, but this movie does not have a good story or plot. But um, also, what is he talking about? I don't that, know. That, was, that Asian movies don't have plot. Uh, I mean, he's, or, or he's, don't talking, have, he's like, specifically story. talking about like the Hong Kong spectacle action movies. I think like martial arts movies. Oh, but granted, I, I, I haven't seen any of those. I don't think, but uh, so I, I those just, are, that's what he said. I just watched uh, Zatoichi, okay. the Blind Swordsman, the first one from like the nineteen sixties. Uh, it was pretty good, but what I'll say is there were not a lot of fight scenes in it. The only thing that he did is he, he so he's a blind he's the blind swordsman, so he's really good at the sword, but he wasn't mas- masseur. And he, what he does when he fights is he just does this, does a super quick. Uh, strike and then sheaths his sword and you die. That's called anime, Jake. Um, unfortunately, in the movie called Mortal Kombat, I don't think anyone blew up. And That's, I don't. No. 
You're wrong. Who? Who? who Scorpion. He in blows the, up in the uh... in hell because the skull, and then he blows up because Johnny Cage like jumps. I all I remember is Johnny Cage drops his little autograph photo, and like those moments were cool. There's a lot of fan service in this movie, and I think it's those moments are done well. Are they? Um, but I don't agree. This film to me kind of feels Frankenstein-y. And uh, I guess that's okay. That? Just like piece together? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, well then Scorpion blows up, I guess. But you know what? I'm vetoing that ruling and giving it a zero. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't remember him blowing up, but I'm not going to give it a zero. I'll give it a one. So average is 0. 0.5. You know yeah. what? I'm going to give it a negative one. Nope, that's cheating. Then I'm gonna it's give cheating. it a two. So now it's a one. Okay, okay, all right. I'll give it. I'll give it a zero so you can have it as a one. It's just. It's just so. Uh, I can't do it. I can't do them like this. You know. Okay. That's just ain't for me. Well, uh, that was Mortal Kombat. Um, I hope. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you loved a lot. I hope you. Oh, what's the other one? I hope you fed your fed your iguana some little nuggets of knowledge. There we go. I don't remember what episode that's from, but I know I've said it before. Hey. Yeah. We're going, we're rolling, and we're keeping on moving. Uh, I think that's right. If you know what that's from, 10 bucks. Uh, yikes merch dropped. Hashtag Eddie Burback, Gus Johnson. Did, did you see his new like floral plant one? Or like there was like just the dots or whatever? I think I did. But... Those I like those. They're, they're very minimalist. Dude. I'm, his... I'm getting into minimalist stuff. Yo, his girlfriend. Did you know he has a twin brother? Tony? Yeah, Tony. Um, anyways, so Yo, check so, out Eddie Burback and check out his girlfriend. Go to, go to, uh, <laughs> we almost made it, the whole, we almost made it the whole episode without Jake, uh, sexualizing somebody. <laughs> no, <laughs> but have you seen her? No, 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 no. Look at right, this. Just tell them, tell them our Twitter and our email and then let's get out of here. We've held, uh, we've held them hostage long enough. No, 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 no. We got, we got like another 10 minutes. Nope. Pacino podcast at gmail.com. And. Pagino Pod on Twitter. There you go. Don't follow the other guys. Who's the other um, guys? The fake. The fake us. Wait. The, who's the? Oh, the uh, the b- b- right. b- So uh, that was Mortal Kombat. Um, honestly, no. I think video game movies, despite what Jake thinks of today, I think video game movies, especially those from the '90s, might be our golden boys for this what podcast because we got to find meaning in the no meanings. Oh well, and Sonic this definitely did not have meaning. We did Sonic. Yeah, but that's not from the '90s. Oh, okay. Um, well, Dungeons and Dragons wasn't either. That's also not a video game, bro. Dungeons and Dragons is from the '90s. I'm pretty sure. Wasn't Look at it? That. No, it's like 2000. All right, let's get out of here. Let's let these people leave. Let's Wait, leave. which one are you talking about? Let's let these people eat their lunch. Did he post it? What are you talking about? The thing, Eddie Burback. Yikes! It's not on Twitter. It was in a. It was in a video. Oh, was it his most recent one? I don't know. I didn't see that. Can you let these people out of here? No. You can say it. Oh, I forgot. Stout and sauerkraut. Stout and sauerkraut. I forgot we were supposed to say something. Yeah. I, I, hmm. Ba-ba.